This is KGW News at Sunrise. At least five states have confirmed cases of the Omicron COVID variant. We have the latest on what health officials know so far. Then. A huge relief. Yeah, great, great check off the list. Ah, uh, they are among the lucky ones and got a COVID booster shot at a local pharmacy that's just taking walk-ins. We'll look at your options if you're having trouble booking an appointment. Good morning, everybody, and happy Friday. Nina and Drew yes. are off today. So we're going to start yeah. with Rod. Boy, you will notice a temperature difference outside this morning. And to be clear, I'm only working to give you company this morning. Let's go to the temperature. <laughs> you now. were off all at the beginning Shit. of the week. Are well, you kidding me? Yes, I, I got bored. That's why I'm here. 32 in Hillsboro, 35 Scappoose, 38 in Portland, 35 out in Troutdale. We actually have fairly clear conditions this morning. We're looking for some fog pockets. Haven't seen much yet. Winds are light. 39 in Salem, uh, who else? Uh, Dallas 35, so I mean, most of us will probably stay above freezing, but again, there are a few frosty spots to be found. So it's the first big coat morning we've seen in a while, right? Mid 30s on average out the door this morning. Still chilly and partly cloudy 46 at noon. Then the kids get out of school a little bit better. We'll get up to around 50 for a high temperature. All right, Rob, thank you very much. We start with a two car crash that has closed the Burnside Bridge this morning. We don't have any details on injuries or what caused the crash, but you're looking at a live picture here. Right now, the bridge is closed, so you will want to take an alternate route. We'll certainly bring you more information just as soon as we get it. And one person was critically injured in an apartment fire in North Portland. It happened in a second floor unit at Argyle Gardens. Fire crews were recalled after just about 30 minutes. An investigator is on the scene working to figure out how it started. Also this morning, more cases of the Omicron COVID variant are being detected across the U.S. There are now confirmed cases in at least five states. Devin Haskins is following the situation and joins us live with the latest. Good morning, Devin. Yeah, Brenda, the first U.S. case was detected on California, as we know, on Wednesday. Now there's cases in New York, Minnesota, Colorado and Hawaii. Some people had recently traveled, but in Hawaii, the variant was detected in an unvaccinated resident with no recent travel history. Experts still don't know whether Omicron is more dangerous than other versions of the virus, but they do believe it has been circulating in the United States longer than we previously knew. I think over the coming days, we are going to see dozens more cases reported across the United States. It is clear not just that it's here, but also that it's spreading. It's just that we hadn't known to look for it already. Now you can hear more from that doctor coming up on the Today Show. Meanwhile, President Biden laid out his plan to fight COVID this winter. Starting in January, health insurance will cover at-home COVID tests, and there's a chance in travel er, and there's a change in travel requirements. All passengers flying to the U.S. from foreign countries must have a negative COVID test within 24 hours. That's down from three days. Another big part of the plan, more vaccinations and boosters. Get this, on Wednesday alone, 2.2 million COVID doses were administered across the country. Brenda, that's the highest single day total since May. Wow, yeah, folks are listening for sure. Thank you, Devin. A lot of people around here say they're frustrated because they can't book an appointment for a COVID booster. But some Portlanders are having success with walk-in vaccinations. Lee Care Pharmacy in the Hollywood District stopped offering appointments for boosters. It says it can get a lot more people through on a first-come, first-served basis. The small pharmacy runs two lines and has all three booster brands available. Police say, or police, people say they don't mind waiting as long as they get that shot. A huge relief. Yeah, great, great check off the list. Um, and yeah, they just these guys are great. I really appreciate them being available and making it available to people so easily. Yeah. Ah, that's nice to hear. So the pharmacy owner says they can do 400 to 500 booster vaccinations a day with their walk in setup. We have put together an online article that has links to Oregon and Washington's vaccine websites. It also lists pharmacies where you can find booster appointments. Just text the word booster to the phone number on your screen, 503-226-5088, and you'll get that link sent straight to your phone. 
In the meantime, Oregon health leaders are deciding what to do about the state's indoor mask mandate. It's temporary and it's set to expire in February. Officials don't want to get rid of it just yet, saying the virus is too unpredictable. Instead, they're looking to put a new rule in place, and we should know what that is by mid-month. Then the public can comment in late December. Oregon and Washington are two of six states still requiring masks in all public places indoors. Oregon, by the way, just lifted its outdoor mask mandate last month. A grand jury has indicted a security guard accused of killing a man in a North Portland parking lot. This happened back in May, but the suspect just turned himself into police yesterday. KGW's Alma McCarty brings us the update. Freddie Nelson, a 49-year-old husband and father of three, was shot, killed in this parking lot of the Lowe's near Delta Park on May 29th. Months later, on Thursday, the Multnomah County District Attorney announced a grand jury indicted 28-year-old Logan Gimbel for the shooting, charging him with second-degree murder, unlawful use of a firearm, recklessly endangering another person, and two counts of unlawful use of mace. At the time of the shooting, the DA's office says Gimbel was working as a private security guard. This announcement following a separate $25 million civil suit filed by Nelson's widow against the property owners and security company. The complaint alleges Gimbel wasn't certified to be an armed guard, nor did he have the certification to carry a weapon. Court documents indicate a dispute between the parties and that the guards were told to be on the lookout for Nelson. According to the civil suit, when Nelson and his wife entered the store, Gimbel blocked the car, then went inside. He told Nelson he was under arrest. When the couple left the store and tried to leave the parking lot, the suit alleges Gimbel tried to open their car door, then pepper sprayed them through the window. Finally, the suit alleges Gimbel stood in front of the car and told Nelson and his wife not to move before firing four shots at the windshield, three of which hit Nelson. In a statement, the Multnomah County District Attorney's Office said, while armed private security guards can encounter situations where the use of deadly force may be considered lawful, most do not receive the tactical and de-escalation training which is expected of sworn law enforcement. The statement goes on to say the DA is committed to working with state lawmakers to assess laws governing the use of private security and accountability. In Portland, Alma McCarty, KGW News. We're also following a developing situation in Salem. Police tell us a body was found near this apartment complex on Claxter Center Northeast near Portland Road. This happened yesterday afternoon. They say there is no danger to the public, but we still don't know yet how the person died. We'll, of course, update you as we learn more. Oregon Governor Kate Brown is back from a recent International Climate Summit in Scotland. She told us she learned a lot and now wants to introduce some of those ideas here in Oregon. Scotland has offshore wind turbines and the governor would like to see some of those built off the southern Oregon coast. She also wants to buy heat pumps for low income households so they can stay cool in the summer and warm in the winter. The governor is also looking to use electric batteries for big farm equipment. How do we electrify our agricultural sector? I think we can do it relatively quickly and with the federal funds that are arriving in Oregon to move to uh, electronic tractors. And um, I, I just think it would be a boon for our rural economies. According to the Oregonian, the state is far behind its goal of having state vehicles 100% electric within the next four years. The governor is also pushing to add more EV charging stations around the state. OMSI revealed updated plans for a big development along the Willamette River. Renderings show the proposed OMSI district, which would transform about 10 city blocks on the central east side. It includes restaurants and businesses and 1,200 housing units with at least 20% for low-income families. 
There will also be a waterfront education park created with the help of tribal governments and indigenous communities. That would include restored habitat and opportunities to learn about ecology and native communities and connections to the river. And our hope is that we can also use it as a teaching space for OMSI so there's more exciting things outside. OMSI is submitting plans to the city of Portland this week. The review process could take six to nine months with construction possibly starting in the next three years. The entire project though could take 15 to 20 years to complete. It'll be nice to see that, you know, kind of transformation taking place. Yeah. Speaking of transformations, you have one in the weather department. Yeah. We're finally talking snow. Yeah, earlier uh, this morning we did a story on mountain bike uh, season being extended uh, because of the lack of snow. And I thought, not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, next chance of precipitation. We have dry weather today, but tomorrow rain in the valley. And it'll be a wet mix up over the Cascades down about 5,000 feet. Something to keep an eye on if you're traveling over the high country. This will be just rain at government camp at Willamette. The pass could get a little icy at times, perhaps. Um, and then Monday, a stronger system. Now, the snow level looking to be not as low as we thought. The latest models show at about 4,000 feet. So that would be government camp right there with the wet mix to accumulating snow. But you get up to the base level of Timberline and Meadows, and it could be a good foot of snow. And then a colder system Wednesday eventually could drop as low as 2,000 feet once the front passes. That one would be 12 to 16 at base levels of Timberline and Meadows, and hopefully down in the Bachelor as well. And overall, we still have a, a mountain forecast for heavy cascade snow with systems coming and going over the next couple of weeks. We're going to get this snow machine revved up. It looks like in terms of uh, skiing and boarding. All right, here we go. We have uh, the cloud fetch, which is broken right now. We actually have a lot of stars out there twinkling and today should set up to be the sunniest day overall that we've seen in a while. Now with that, we have um, a chilly start this morning. Everybody's dry and everybody will have at least partly cloudy skies, the coast out into the gorge, mostly sunny skies east of the Cascades. The next weather system in is tomorrow. This shows rain as early as 730 and then the 1030. The rain is really getting going and really tomorrow. Most hours are going to be wet. OK, and then on the seven day forecast, we're back to dry weather on Sunday. So 52, 48, 49, strongest systems, a really rainy Monday and a really rainy Wednesday. Brenda, it's your turn. All right, you got it. I'm going to take a look at what's coming up next. They are holiday pop-up shops featuring local vendors. We'll have more on this unique way to support small businesses in the metro area. Don't go away.